Thank you everyone for your patience. We'll be starting momentarily as soon as we have a couple more members. So good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for this very special session on open source contributions and GSOC. I would like to thank everyone for joining our very first live session uh, hosted by the Student Placement Council. Today, the SPC is being represented by me. My name is Nikhil Guru, and I will be hosting the session for all of you today. I'm also joined by my rep co representatives, uh, Padmaja Sharma, Tripti Arya, Urusha, Lakshya and Utkarsh. So before we go in, I would uh, like to give uh, a brief introduction about our guest today. So he is a very close friend of mine, as well as a very, very amazing contributor in the field of open source. Uh, he, has, he is a two times GSOC, uh, GSOC intern and has been working for MetaBrains for quite some time now. He is very knowledgeable and he is actually one of the best mentors I have ever seen uh, that has talked about open source in the open community. I would like to give a very, very warm welcome to our fellow student, as well as our guest speaker for today's event, Prathamesh. Hello, Prathamesh. How are you? Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Nikhil. Thanks for the kind introduction. Uh, uh, so yeah, I'm uh, very happy to be here today. And uh, special thanks to the SPC for uh, um, letting me have this session and uh, letting me speak to you uh, guys. Uh, so yeah. Last time uh, I've had a similar session about um, GSOC and open source in general. So uh, yeah, let's talk about the basics first. Maybe let's see if we can get the screen, uh, screen sharing working. Okay. Okay, is my presentation visible? Yeah, yes, it is. Please go ahead, uh, Prathamesh. Sure. So uh, a brief introduction about me. So uh, since 2022, I have been working uh, with the uh, MetaBrains Foundation as a Google Summer of Code uh, contributor. So uh, what MetaBrains does is that uh, it works with music technology. Like uh, it means, uh, maintains databases for like uh, uh, all of the music released in this world, all of the artists behind the music. Uh, it includes everything from uh, the area where the music was produced, uh, like um, all the live concerts uh, and all of that. So it's a community maintained database. And uh, I think uh, we have quite a few uh, like um, industry partners, like um, uh, Google uses uh, this database for their search results, uh, even Bing uses it. Um, and uh, some other uh, major players in the music industry, like uh, Last.fm also use this particular data set. Um, so yeah, uh, here I have been, uh, uh, so basically this has been my first open source experience. I started back in, I think, uh, November, 2021. Uh, I did some basic contributions and uh, uh, yeah, now we are here in um, uh, almost in August, 2023, and uh, I'm still rocking at meta veins, I think. Um, so let me first start with my experience with uh, Google Summer of Code and uh, open source. And why does it exactly matter? Uh, uh, so first of all, the project, uh, like um, so far I've worked on two major projects. Both of them were data engineering projects uh, since uh, it's a data oriented organization. Um, there, uh, I think we might have some uh, machine learning uh, projects too next year. So uh, keep on the lookout for that. Uh, we also have like a lot of uh, front end work and all of that. Uh, so yeah, coming back to my project, like uh, my first project was like, um, uh, in the first project I had to clean up, transform 
uh, process and uh, finally publish a huge uh, open source music listening data set uh, and uh, yeah it had like 27 billion rows of music streaming data and uh, this particular data set is now being used um, uh, in one of our products that is uh, listen brains to uh, generate like um, uh, mu- music recommendation all right so uh, in total so far i have received like 8 uh, months of mentorship um if you get selected in gsoc once um, your tenure is like 3 uh, months and in the 3 months you get like um, uh, complete mentorship support from uh, seasoned uh, open source veterans that work in your open source organization uh, then you get to make some really talented friends like uh, 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 the particular gsoc uh, groups that i am in uh, like discord servers and all the exclusive whatsapp groups and all like uh, everyone is doing something um, doing something great i would say like uh, so um, yeah that kind of experience helps a lot then you get to make a reputation like uh, like uh, any fang company google summer of code leaves a good impression in your resume as well uh, so yeah that helps a lot because uh, i think i received uh, i have received like uh, at least two three offers from the uh, industry folks themselves so yeah uh, also you get to work for a cause that you are passionate about uh, the best part i find about open source is that uh, like there is little to no barrier to entry if you have a good idea if you can implement it uh, if you can the right uh, if you can find the right organization to implement it Uh, you will definitely get a lot of support from the community um, and yeah like the stipend part um, everyone knows like gsoc pays some great stipend so um, if that's your motivation that's fine too i guess so for today's uh, agenda we will first see what is open source why open source uh, i think we have covered all of that and yeah five steps to gsoc and open source like uh, this is quite important i would say so don't skip that one um so yeah let's first start with what is open source so uh, all of you might have been aware about like uh, uh, linux everyone knows about linux uh, these are like uh, linux is just an operating system kernel and um, like we re- uh, refer a lot of operating systems as linux but uh, that's not the right terminology but either way uh, let's say the linux operating system that uh, is used uh, on almost uh, i don't remember the uh, figure exactly but like 95% of servers worldwide or something uh, even the mars rover that uh, nasa sends out uh, even that runs on linux or something uh, if i am not wrong then uh, the uh, favorite uh, language of ours uh, python python is also open source c c++ all these languages are open source git is open source um, and yeah uh, some top technologies like kubernetes and all these are also uh, some open source technologies that everyone seems to be using these days uh, so yeah open source is a term that was originally referred to open source software um, and this kind of software is designed to be publicly accessible uh, so let's say you have product like uh, let's say google maps so google maps is a uh, product that is owned by google and uh, google owns all the rights for its source code and all uh, so you can't really see the source code for uh, google maps so you can't uh, make any changes to it but on the other hand uh, let's say you have something like uh, firefox mozilla firefox is uh, also an open source uh, uh, web browser that anyone can use uh, and anyone can see its code for free anyone can clone its code and uh, make their own versions of it um, so yeah if you are aware about the tor browser it's also based on firefox if i remember correctly uh, then open source software also fosters open exchange collaborative participation uh, it provides rapid prototyping uh, it also has a lot of transparency like the communities are extremely transparent uh, and generally non profit but they still make a lot of money that's uh, like a kind of a paradox but yeah it happens I think um, money is a huge motivator for a lot of these things I believe so right a lot of people get yeah. into OSS and stay for money they come for the money and they stay for the you know enjoyment and the yes. development aspect of it if i am not wrong yeah definitely like uh, 
um, I wouldn't lie. Like uh, back in 2021, like uh, I come from a low income household. I had a 10 year old laptop. I wanted to buy a new laptop, <laughs> and I didn't have the money for it. So I was like, uh, let's just go and do G Socks. <laughs> so yeah, that somehow worked, and I'm really grateful for that. Um, and yeah, I have, so far I have stick, uh, stuck stuck uh, into open source because like um, the work culture is great. Everything is remote. Um, you get to interact with some great folks. Like, for example, uh, my particular organization is based in Barcelona, mm-hmm. and uh, they also have a, a great university uh, right next to their office. So, uh, funny story. Uh, a recruiter reached out to me a few days ago, and um, he has uh, studied uh, in the university that's uh, right uh, next to my uh, MetaBrains office. And uh, there he did some courses, like uh, not some courses. He did his P, uh, MS, PhD, and postdoc um, in music technology at um, the particular university. And um, like around 10 years ago or 15 years ago, he has already uh, worked with my mentor. So yeah, we built that connection, and um, he offered me some opportunities as well. So that's kind of uh, that's the kind of exposure that you get in open source. So open source can really take you places from India to Barcelona. You've made some very interesting communications and connections. So if anyone really wants to get into that global market, I guess open source contributions is the quickest way to go about it. Right. And of course, you know, if you can, uh, if you're really talented, you can make a lot of money like you through GSOC as well. Hello, uh, Prathamesh, am I audible? Sorry, everyone. It seems like we're having a few technical difficulties. Uh, we'll be uh, resuming very shortly. I'm extremely sorry for that. So it looks like Pratamesh is facing a few technical difficulties. I guess post-COVID, everyone has internet problems these days. But uh, until then, you guys can go ahead and drop any questions that you have in the comment section. The entire SPC is available to help uh, you know solve your questions. Uh, and if you guys have any other related questions, you guys can go ahead and drop them in the chat as well. We'll be resuming in two minutes.
So while you guys are waiting, I have shared a couple of resources about the G uh, Google Summer of Code and GSOC in general. So you guys can go ahead and check those materials out. And uh, if you know, if you have any questions related to that, the entire SPC is here. We'll, we're more than happy to answer any questions you guys have. And you guys can please share this session with your friends. I see that we have 54 participants. Uh, it would be great if even more of you guys joined. Uh, so just spread the word out to your friends, anyone who is interested in Google Summer of Code, interested in, you know, getting a huge, uh, huge uh, consumer base, making lots of connections on LinkedIn abroad and, you know, meeting a lot of fun people. If you want to learn about that, then please invite your friends over to join this very interesting session on open source contributions, everybody. Yeah. Okay, so Soham asks, I'm in the second year of my college and I'm looking forward to crack GSOC. Please explain the application process was facing difficulties regarding where and how to apply to the companies. Okay, so I'm quite sure Pratamesh can give you a better picture about this. But GSOC, I have shared a link to all of the companies that are available right now. You can check that link right now, Soham. So GSOC 2023's, 2023's applications have actually closed for this year. But in case you want to start applying for 2024, you can check out the website. You can go through the list of companies that were selected this year. And you can try your pick, select uh, you know a company of your choosing, of your liking, reach out to them. And uh, if you're lucky, then you'll be assigned a mentor and you can start working with them, right? Uh, okay, so Akash asks, I'm a foundation level student. I have no experience to this and I'm here for some exposure to open source. Thank you so much for joining us, Akash. As soon as Pratamesh comes back, I'm sure he'll be able to, uh, you know, answer a lot of the questions you guys have. Until then, you can go ahead and you can, you know, start inviting your friends, uh, you know, get them to join in, hop on the OSS journey as well. Yes, so. Uh, So yes, I have shared the link again in case anyone else wants to go through the uh, go through the resources. You guys can go ahead, check out GSOC, and you can come up with maybe a couple more questions to ask Prathamesh when he comes back.
Okay, so I'm going to have to ask you guys to refrain from asking questions about the placement drive. In case you have any questions related to inter internships and placements, you can reach out to us via email uh, to the IIC or to the Student Placement Council. We'll be more than happy to ask answer your questions about that over there. So I guess, yes, Ayan, you can uh, drop your questions in the chat, buddy, in case you have uh, any questions. Uh, so we'll have a Q&A session after this. Uh, you can ask your questions to Prathamesh directly then. So I believe Prathamesh is back. Hi, Prathamesh, uh, we can't hear you. Prathamesh, I'm sorry, but we can't hear you. Uh, Maybe uh, it's an issue with your mic. Can I ask on the hierarchy of complexity on issues we can tackle during contributing to open source? So yes, uh, the issues that you can tackle during uh, your open source journey can be varied, Aryan. So it actually depends on what organizations you uh, choose to join during your OSS journey. Uh, most of the you know basic bug fixes, uh, OSS issues are always going to be there. Uh, and then there are always going to be uh, bigger issues that you can always tackle. Sometimes the code bases get humongous and you require some uh, maintenance on the back end, uh, maybe implementing new technologies like Prathamesh talked about creating a new data set for uh, his open source technology. There are a lot of different things that you can implement with Aryan. So, you know, it's all about, uh, you know, uh, choosing what works best for you, I guess. So I believe Prathamesh is back. Uh, Prathamesh, can you say hi? Okay, so Arin, I guess Prathamesh can give you a better example about that. Uh, but as I said, Prathamesh, uh, unfortunately, uh, we can't hear you, Prathamesh. Maybe it's a problem with your uh, microphone. Hey, I'm audible now? Yes, yes, you can go ahead yes. now, Prathamesh, we can hear you. Maybe it was an issue with my earphones. Uh, yeah, that I'm happens, sure. that happens, uh, we understand. Uh, Please go ahead. Hi, I'll go ahead with laptop speakers then. Uh, okay, so let's continue without wasting any more time. Uh, I apologize. I apologize for the network issues. Uh, yeah, so um, we were talking about open source. Uh, so. Yeah, I'll just uh, list another point about it and let's move ahead, I guess. So anyone with enough skills can contribute code and engage with this open source communities. If you have, maybe you can go contribute to the uh, Python Foundation. Maybe you can, um, if you want a new feature in Google Chrome, maybe you can um, contribute to its um, like uh, parent software that is um, Chromium, which is also maintained by Google. Uh, so yeah, if as long as you have skills, the entry barrier. Like had at least 20 years of experience working with uh, open source technologies and all. Uh, so yeah, that was great. Um, and then you get to build your portfolio. Uh, Hello. 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 I'm afraid we can't hear you again. Uh, 
you can uh, switch off your video so that we can hear you better yes prathamesh you can uh, turn off your video we can't really hear you right now so maybe that will help Okay, maybe let's try that. uh hi i'm audible again uh yes we can hear you now prasmesh okay is yeah. it clear yeah we can or hear you now prasmesh yes okay okay great uh, i really apologize for the network that was uh, really unexpected i'm sitting on three hotspots right now <laughs> and it still ain't working no well, that's fine we understand all right so uh let's cut to the chase then starting your open source journey um so first of all let's learn about the prerequisites like uh, the first thing you need to learn is like uh, i should like rearrange this like first you need to know any uh, intermediate programming skills not even intermediate i would say like basic to intermediate uh, you can choose any language a lot of folks ask me like uh, what is the best language for getting selected into gsoc uh, and there is no such thing as a best language for getting selected into gsoc Uh, just pick whatever you are comfortable with. Uh, if you like uh, web development, uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, JS. Um, uh, if you want to work on like uh, Kubernetes and stuff, Java, Go, Golang is great. If you want to, uh, uh, Ratmesh, like, sorry, some... sorry to bother you again, uh, but we cannot see your screen. Okay. Is it visible now? Yes, it's visible yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. nice uh so yeah the programming languages uh, it can be anything like from python to c++ uh, to web development to app development uh, you can even go the ios route if you want um yeah so uh, pick whatever you are comfortable with like i started out with uh, data science and um, in my time i couldn't find a lot of data science projects in gsoc but um, uh, since i had passion for my particular uh, like uh, tech stack and the projects that i was working on i was able to find a great project and uh, it was like my development uh, and it was like the perfect fit for me so uh, in the end i also got selected for the particular project uh, then the next thing that you need is uh, proficiency with git and github like uh, you need uh, like if you want to learn git and github the best way i would say is uh, build any personal project in uh, let's say you build a project in python that uh, uh, let's say it's a simple website hosted on flask that takes some input and uh, then it writes a paragraph based on uh, some uh, llm model or in uh, any ai model okay so uh, maybe you build that particular little project then what you do is that you host it on github and then you also share it on linkedin and all so that uh, just helps you reach but um, the uh, the github part of it is like the baseline for getting selected into any open source project or uh, getting any open source experience so yeah definitely learn github um, and learn git in deep as so the next thing um, the next most important thing i would say is google foo like kung fu but google foo you have to um, know your google very well how to google um, solutions for your problems how to use uh, stack overflow how to ask uh, ask for doubts on stack overflow um, like a lot of people i know like uh, they get into simple issues and they start calling their friends uh, so if you are a coder that's not the most efficient way to solve bugs at all uh, and you can't always just uh, reach out to your mentors and uh, ask for a solution so yeah you have to be able to uh, independently implement your own solutions for your Uh, own issues uh, i would 
also like to add in this like uh, you can also use chat gpt um i use chat gpt pretty heavily in my day to day workload like uh, uh, this year's project um i don't know like uh, it also involves docker and basically i don't know anything about docker so i just asked chat gpt how to implement this how to implement that uh, how to write uh, so uh, i know sql but like there's this new thing that i'm using nowadays that is sparkle so uh, it's used for querying some uh, big data from sites like wikidata wikipedia and all of that um, so yeah writing sparkle query, uh, queries and all that so you can always get help from chat gpt but don't over use it please uh, because you have to learn um, and yeah lastly you have to have some familiarity with uh, linux for software development um, because linux is like an uh, universal environment for uh, all open source software if you are let's say developing a um, let's say you are developing something for the kubernetes client uh, even for that you will have to uh, use uh, linux because uh, all of that is hosted in linux and works best with linux because um, uh, even while writing python scripts and jupyter notebooks has faced a lot of uh, issues on windows so yeah i just uh, uh, you don't even have to do a boot or anything nowadays I, uh, what i just do is uh, i use something called wsl maybe i'll just uh, write it here use wsl for windows or just use mac os or linux linux is the best in my opinion okay so how to build the skills so building the skills is uh, simple but not easy uh, i would advise you to first of all build and show off your personal projects on github Uh, then share those links uh, of your projects and what your project does uh, on other socials like um, uh, linkedin twitter or even threads nowadays um, also learn to participate in hackathons like uh, we have some pretty great hackathons all over in india uh, like the smart india hackathon and all that so participate in hackathons it will definitely help you build skills and collaborate with others um, and yeah learn in public to build credibility so again that's the thing uh, why would someone sit uh, let's say in my case sitting in uh, somewhere in barcelona would hire me uh, i would have to show some proof of work so how do you show that proof of work like um, obviously you have your github profile but uh, if you let's say also have a great linkedin profile uh, where you show off all your uh, new learnings um, where you show off or let's say where you share your passion about uh, technology about the stuff you are working with uh, that just helps with building more credibility uh, and as a great side effect it uh, also opens up your profile to lo a lot of recruiters so if you eventually end up building great skills you will be reached out by a lot of recruit uh, recruiters um, so yeah the linux point we have already covered okay so the ideal candidate uh, i would say get a checklist and see if you check all the boxes um, in this list like first of all you should be passionate about any particular community uh, let's say you want to contribute to firefox maybe um, you should consider contributing to firefox because you uh, want to let's say add some feature that um, you think is missing in firefox or uh, let's say you are just passionate about the community you like the people in the community or something like that that passion really uh, shines through in your proposal and uh, a lot of folks i have seen like uh, they have no passion they just uh, come for the sake of gsoc for the sake of earning a stipend so yeah please don't do that that will only bring you down um, and uh, you must have almost enough technical skills required to pull off a particular project i say almost because um, let's say um, my last year's project um the requirements for that particular project were uh, python postgres ql um what was that again um, apache spark and uh, something called type sense that i still don't know anything about uh, so yeah i uh, at the at that particular time i only knew python and i was passionate about data i had built some uh, projects previously in the uh, in the similar domain i hadn't used a lot of databases and all but yeah but, even with uh, the requirement even with like one fourth of the skills i was uh, still able to uh, learn some stuff on the fly so yeah that helps too but uh, make sure you are at least like 50% of the required skills 
and you can just uh, learn everything else on the fly uh, then you must be a good communicator um, mostly what we do only new uh, is, uh, let me show you my that been some uh, projects previously in the uh, in the similar domain i hadn't used uh okay i have changed my screen share a little can you uh, see my chatting window nikhil can you please confirm yes yes we can see your screen we can screen, uh, see your screen pradmesh okay okay can you see uh, this particular thing called irc cloud yes yes we can we can so yeah um, where to reach out to this organization that's a like a that's an everlasting question from everybody so that depends on org to org like my particular organization and a lot of open source organizations uh, work on a uh, chat on something called irc like uh, internet relay chat it was in, invented in like 1989 or something and it's kind of complicated to browse at least for me um, that's one way to communicate with your organizations um, i would suggest you all to just note this down irc and study about it in your own time uh, then some also work on discord servers that's quite easy everyone uses discord nowadays and some work on slack uh, some have their own emailing lists and all that um, and all of that just depends on your own organization so yeah you have to you will have to explore that on your own um, yeah and then you have to be uh, proactive so don't wait for anyone to give you instructions uh, go in ask for some instructions and Uh, like over deliver i would say right from the get go start over delivering and if you have any doubts feel free to ask but like uh, don't ask like everything uh, because these maintainers are quite busy on their own um, so yeah uh, and then honor your commitments that's a pretty huge deal like because if you can't honor your commitments you won't get selected at all uh, then your yeah, mentors are obviously pretty busy uh, the people that would be guiding you throughout your project so uh, make sure you like work on your stuff collect your questions in advance uh, collect your uh, discussion points in advance take some of their time let's say uh, i meet with my mentors uh, on every monday at uh, 11:30 pm uh, so yeah i uh, for that particular meeting i collect everything that i have worked on over the week and uh, i just discuss it with my mentors uh then yeah have a mindset of uh, improving with feedback uh, and uh, uh, you will get brownie points if you show willingness to stick around the community in the long term so don't just come for gsoc and then go away maybe uh, because organizations hope that all the gsoc candidates that come uh, maybe they stick around for a bit longer work on some other projects in the community and all of that uh okay so let's now move on to the next slide what is google summer of code so uh, according to chat gpt gsoc is an annual program sponsored by google that provides a platform for students around the world okay uh, to work on open source projects during their summer break uh, students are paired with mentor organizations and work on a coding project for 3 months uh, it can also be extended by the because my last year's project was extended by like uh, two months or something um, and yes this program is specifically targeted for college students and all uh, but even if you are graduated and even if you are not into tech yet you can still get into the program like uh, uh, since we have such a diverse uh, community here at iitm i would strongly suggest you all to first uh, check all the requirements for getting selected uh, and yeah so let's just discuss the five steps to gsoc i would say uh, because uh, in my own time when i was trying to contribute to gsoc i found it quite uh, confusing like uh, what exactly to do what not to do so let's just break it down into five simple steps okay so step 1 is obviously getting started um, you have to follow a lot of uh, contributor guides and all like um, i hope i will be able to clear a lot of your doubts within this session uh you can also reach out to me on linkedin if you have any more doubts but um before doing any of that i would strongly recommend you all to follow some um, basic resources like uh, google themselves 
I have published a GSOC guide for students. So make sure to read it. It, it was like the best resource I have found for GSOC. Uh, yeah, familiarize yourself with the eligibility criteria and the timeline of the program. Because uh, if you can't be available in the particular timeline, uh, I think the timeline is like uh, May ending to September starting. So that's like almost three months or four months. Uh, read, uh, then if you have already selected a particular organization that you would like to work with, uh, let's say you would like to work with MetaBrains, uh, then I would say Google about uh, MetaBrains, what they are all about. And uh, if they have any Google Summer of Code guides published on their pages, like uh, for example, here's a GSOC guide published by my organization. Um, so yeah, they specify everything that they think they need from an aspiring GSOC candidate. So like that's like the whole Brahmastra for you right there. So once you have selected your organization, definitely go and um, see what the organization expects from you. Mm. Can you again learn in public, build up your GitHub and LinkedIn profiles. It's not always compulsory, but it definitely helps a lot. Uh, and this last point, extremely important point, the best time to start is uh, around early November or uh, at least around January because you will be learning a lot of things on the fly. So you can't just like, uh, uh, let's say the deadline for applying for GSOC is um, around the end of March, let's say. Uh, and if you try to write a proposal like uh, 10 days before the deadline, you will definitely not get selected. Uh, if you try to write a proposal one month before the deadline, you may get selected. But uh, again, that depends on your skill set. But if you start writing your pro uh, proposal or start working on a particular project, like uh, three months before the deadline, I think you will definitely get in if you stick around for the whole three months. Spoiler alert. This is an old timeline. Let's skip that. Okay. So first of all, what you have to do is uh, find an organization that you would like to work with. So let's see the list of organizations that were in GSOC 2023. Okay, so we have all these organizations over here. Like we have XVT, the Linux Foundation itself, OpenSUSE, like uh, that's a Linux system right there. NumFocus, NumFocus uh, builds products like uh, Pandas and NumPy and everything that we use in our, our data science workflows. Uh, then Metaspart, if you are into cybersecurity, Internet Archive, uh, like a lot of household names over here. Okay, let's say I want, uh, you can also filter by tags and all of that. So let's say um, you want to work with something related to data. I just click here, data. Uh, and all of these are data related organizations. I'll go down, go down, go down. We even have TensorFlow. Okay, we have something interesting right here. The MetaBrains Foundation that works with open music and book metadata and musical recommendations. So I am into music. So let's say uh, I pick met uh, the MetaBrains Foundation. Uh, now from here, I have um, all the info I need about the MetaBrains Foundation like um, their ideas list, all the ideas, they, um, project ideas that they have for GSOC. Project ideas, let's say, okay, so as you can see, here are all the projects that they'll be uh, listing out. Uh, sorry, I should say that they had listed out for GSOC 2023, like uh, this particular um, UI UX project for the flash release play, uh, phase. Then this data hostel project, uh, some music recommendation projects. Uh, I think this is like a direct descendant to my GSOC 2022 project. Good to see here. Um, okay, let's try something else. Okay, they are fine on this particular project. So this is the project that I got selected in this year. Uh, so what I did, I just came to this page. Uh, I saw the project difficulty, project length and all that, uh, the skills required. So I definitely know SQL and Python. So this was a perfect project for me. 
Uh, I saw the project description, it sounded interesting. Uh, then I just saw the mentors. Uh, so I know these mentors personally, so I just reached out to them on the MetaBrains and ICC. So I just uh, went here. Uh, let's say the mentor is Bitman. So I just go here and say, hi Bitman. Uh, if he is online, he will reply. So let's not disturb him for now. Um, okay, so that's how you select a particular project. Obviously, this is uh, just one example. Uh, it depends, and uh, it's different for every organization out there. If you, let's say, uh, go for something like TensorFlow, they might have a completely different uh, list for projects. They have everything listed here on how to apply. Um, what are some projects that they would like some help with? And all of that. So yeah, uh, that's something you have to do in your own time. Definitely explore, give it some time. Um, once you have done that, let's say you like a particular project uh, in the MetaBrains Foundation. What you can just do is uh, find someone who has already worked at MetaBrains and reach out to them on uh, maybe LinkedIn or Twitter and ask them about their experience. So that's exactly what I did last time. So I found a guy named Akshat that had already worked uh, at MetaWiz. I just DM'd him on LinkedIn and asked him if uh, I was doing the right things or the wrong things. Uh, basically, asked him for a lot of advice. So uh, that helped a lot. So definitely do that if you need any help from me. Definitely message me on LinkedIn. I'd be happy to help. Uh, and yes, before you, uh, okay, let's say you have found some help and uh, you want to now go and interact with the organization, which is the next step. We'll come to it soon. Uh, just uh, make sure that you don't go empty handed or I would say uh, empty minded because you will have to like uh, do some basic research. If you want to go, participate in some project at um, MetaBrains, you have to first read about, about what MetaBrains is, uh, what it stands for, what kind of projects uh, MetaBrains has worked with in the past, um, and why you are a good fit for the project and all of that, uh, and why you are interested for that particular project in the first place. So yeah, make sure to clear all of that out. Uh, make sure to um, at least have, um, make sure that you have at least uh, looked at the code base of the project that you are working with. Make sure you have to, uh, okay, let me just show an example. Okay, so I know for a fact that uh, MetaBrains hosts its uh, code bases on GitHub. So I have just come here. Let's say I have to work with MusicBrains Docker, this particular project. So what I would do is I would just come here, take a look at this uh, massive code base, uh, look at all these new files that I have never learned in college. Uh, I would open something. I see nothing. I would uh, explore more. I would see these YAML files and then I would just get scared. So uh, like very honestly, that happens to the best of us. We will always get scared by these uh, huge code bases because these are production code bases and we are students, we are not worked with a lot of production code bases yet, unless you have worked uh, at some other internships and all. Uh, so yeah, it's natural to get scared, but it's okay, just explore the project a little. Uh, it's all, not this particular project, let's say you have found a uh, project in Python. If you have some uh, decent proficiency in Python, you will at least understand like some of the code base, not all of it, but some of it. Uh, then every project has these readme files. So I would uh, recommend you to go through it. Like, um, yeah, this is a pretty, pretty huge project. So they have given all the prerequisites and all that. Uh, they have even given some instructions. Let me just show the instructions. Okay. These are the instructions for running a small version of this project. So yeah, you just follow the, these instructions, try something out on your own time. And then maybe you can just go and reach out to the organization and say, um, yeah, I won't type here, let's, <laughs> let's say, let's uh, say you just go to the organization and you say, I have tried building, uh, building the test setup for this particular project. Uh, this is, um, I was able to do XYZ 
and I was facing some issues with um, ABC, let's say. And can you help me with the ABC part? And if you be that specific, you definitely get some help and you won't get ignored because uh, open source is uh, always in the need of new contributors. So they will definitely treat you like family if you value them enough. Okay. Yeah. So let's see how to get involved with the communities. Like as we talked earlier, you can get involved with the communities on Discord, IRC chat, or chat, or Slack channels, or emailing list. And all of that depends on your particular organization. So uh, do your due diligence and find out what it takes to communicate with your particular community. Uh, the next thing you can do is uh, you can start contributing. So yeah, that's the hard part. Starting to contribute, like you can see these uh, huge code bases. How exactly would you contribute to this? So for that, first try to find any uh, good first books. I don't know if I have it here. It's here. Right. So it varies from organization to organization. You have definitely have to do some deep diving to uh, come to this. But like uh, all major organizations generally have this um, like project management system. Like for, uh, at Metabase, we have something called Jira. So uh, in here, all issues are listed. So uh, these are all open issues. Let's say uh, you find this uh, simple issue that uh, some icons are badly formatted in the Android app. So if you think if you uh, if you can tackle this issue, if you think you are um, good enough at working with Android that you can tackle this, uh, this issue, definitely just leave a comment uh, here or um, on their GitHub repository. Maybe try to open a pull request or maybe uh, ask someone in the organization uh, how exactly would you tackle this issue. Uh, so yeah, do that. Start making your first contributions. Uh, and then, uh, okay, so your first contribution doesn't always have to change the world. It doesn't ha have to be the uh, best pull request in the world. It doesn't have to like uh, add a completely new feature in the first try. So yeah, uh, these code bases are pretty huge. Okay, so you can't always uh, build something complicated on your first try. So what I would recommend you is just uh, take this repository, just uh, copy this, maybe um, open up your terminal or whatever where you like to work on your project and uh, then just clone this repository and then try to like um, try to like uh, tackle these issues if you can't tackle these issues maybe what you can do is you know uh, every project has some documentation so this project also has some documentation let's say you are trying to build uh, the development setup of this particular project you are uh, following these particular instructions and you found the simple typing error in these instructions. Uh, what you can just do is just uh, like try to edit this readme file, fix the small, uh, let's say it's a you know two letter typing mistake. You can just fix the two letter typing mistake, open up a pull request for it, and if it gets merged, you like still have the brownie points for at least contributing something to the project. Okay. So that's how you can start. You have to start small. Uh, and let's say you have uh, later on found some bigger issues. What you can do is like, uh, don't go take a look at the whole damn code base. Um, you can just, uh, okay, let me show a simpler project. Maybe. This is the project that I'm currently working with. It doesn't even have a lot of documentation, sorry for that. Uh, so yeah, if you, uh, have to add a particular feature. If you know a little bit about the project, uh, you just go into this particular file, get into this particular file, uh, and maybe work on this little function right here. Or uh, I can find another one. Okay, any little function like this, add release. If you have some issues with releases, you just come here and try to fix this function. Uh, so, yeah, you have to just uh, shortlist like uh, from the whole big code base, you have to go down, make it smaller and smaller, make your problem statement extremely small and manageable. So, yeah, that's the first thing you should do before tackling any 
big issues. Uh, yeah, and that's like the uh, biggest part of interacting with the communities for getting selected. Uh, you will have to do this for a few months. You will have to build some pull requests. You have to submit some pull requests. Um, and yeah, basically just get some experience with your project. Uh, and once you have done that, not once you are done that, while you are doing that, uh, make sure that you build a good reputation within, within the community while interacting. Uh, so again, why should someone hire you? They would hire you because they want to work with you. And why would they actually like to work with you? One, you have the skills. Uh, and two, you are, you are also like a, a great person to work with. So be that particular great person to work with. Uh, you have to be early, you have to be consistent, you have to demonstrate your passion for the project, you have to be proactive, do things on your own, you have to be respectful of others. Like These are the basics, I know, but um, it has to be said because a lot of people just ignore this. They just think open source is like some clockwork and they can just go fit right in. No, you have to first get involved with the community. That's extremely important. Uh, then maybe what you can do is just select a project in that particular community. So as we saw here, thank you there. Okay. So as I uh, showed you on this particular page, this particular page has um, all the ideas for all the projects that MetaBrain has. What I did after I interacted with the community, found it helpful, found it uh, engaging. Uh, after basically uh, after I had decided to work with MetaBrains, I came here and I started looking at ideas. Um, and while looking at ideas, I found this particular idea interesting. And then I started implementing massively on that one idea. So, um, and once you start implementing on that particular idea, uh, you will get like uh, you will get to know about the project better. You will get to know about the problem statement better. Uh, and you will also get to uh, build your own solution for that particular problem. And that's the point when you start writing your GSOC proposal, which is quite important for getting selected. So just pick a project. Uh, some tips for picking a project. For GSOC, you can basically apply with three different projects, but uh, I would strongly recommend not to go behind three different projects and apply for all three of them. Uh, I strongly recommend you to pick one single project and give it your all because these projects are pretty time complicated. Um, and if you run behind three different projects, you will uh, lessen your chances of getting selected in either of them. Okay, and most projects require more skills than you might have, and that's completely fine. Um, in my particular case, as I said, they required um, Python, PostgreSQL, uh, Apache Spark. And type sense. I only knew basics of Python pandas and all of that. I had some good projects, and I didn't have any idea about the rest of the uh, three skills. But I did pick them up over time. But uh, but I still strongly suggest that uh, you should at least have 40 to 50 percent of the required skills. And uh, once you start working on a particular project, make sure uh, that you are taking notes daily. So uh, maybe. You can write it down on your notepad, or if you use Notion and all, you can just uh, copy paste some of the issues or some of the solutions that you are coming up with uh, in your notes. Because all the notes that you take now, um, it will definitely help you with writing a proposal. So what you have to take the notes of is the problem statement first of all, what the problem statement exactly is, what the community expects you uh, to do with that problem statement, uh, then. Uh, as a GSOC contributor, if you get selected, what uh, kind of solution would you be working with? Then uh, what skills you would be uh, needing to implement the solution? The skills that you already have, you have to sell yourself a little on the skills. Uh, you have to talk about any contributions that you have made in the community so far. Uh, like this is the most important thing I did. Keep track of all the contributions that you have made in that particular community. And um, you'll have to represent those contributions later down the line in your proposal. Okay, then comes the last part, working on your GSOC proposal. 
so yes first of all uh, i think most of the organizations out there have their own proposal guidelines mine didn't have one for some reason uh, no they did had uh, they did have proposal guidelines but they didn't have a particular proposal format uh, so some organizations uh, might say that um, you have to write a proposal that specifies uh, these is contact information then the problem statement and the solution statement uh, then uh, what exactly are you working with and all that uh, so let me just give you an example this is the kind of proposal that uh, the folks over at metabrains recommended me and uh, not just me everyone to build uh, i implemented heavily on that suggestion uh, and i came up with this pretty long um, project proposal so it just specifies the abstract of the project what exactly the project is all about um, we have some diagrams definitely include include diagrams because like how long is this proposal it's like 21 pages of text no one is going to read all of that not even the uh, not even your mentors uh, so yeah definitely try to structure it well add some diagrams because that will help then we have the uh, problem statements listed here and we have the project goals what do they have to exactly do in the project then uh, we have some processes listed here some more flow tasks and all of that then uh, how exactly would you be implementing the project or the deliverables that uh, will be delivering at the end of the project like uh, this is a pretty great thing to add because uh, it gives a clear idea of what exactly would be the outcome of your particular project so definitely add this deliver uh, deliver deliverables in your project proposal um then like these are some more questions that were specified in the uh, meta brain format for proposal uh, your or might have some different requirements so definitely check out for that so i just answered all the uh, questions that they had asked then uh, project timeline this is pretty important i would say the most important part of your uh, proposal so basically yeah, you just have to imagine uh, that you get selected for the uh, particular project that you are applying to and if you get selected uh, you can just uh, like refer to the timeline of the project so let me show you an example timeline okay this is an example timeline for these all the projects Uh, so you can just take a look at this time uh, this timeline and then uh, see what you will be uh, doing in the first week of your project the second week of your project uh, and so on so just give you an example okay here i have listed the phase 1 uh, that is the part 1 of the project uh, in the week 1 uh, i will have done all of that uh, in week 2 I would have set up my environment, uh, worked on some data frames, uh, like uh, learn more of uh, SQL because I didn't know SQL very well back then, and all of that. Uh, so this has to be a pretty detailed timeline, and make uh, if you can write a detailed timeline, it just shows that you know well about your project. Uh, and if you can't, then like, it's just a bad impression. So make sure to write a good timeline for your project. Can I ask some more format questions? Uh, I know I just went ahead and I get some more info about you. That was not required, but I still went ahead and added all of it, like all of my basic skills, my CV, and certification. Because at that time I thought certification mattered, but no, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and uh, lastly. um definitely also mention your time allowances like uh, a lot of people they like try to lie that uh, yeah i have the all uh, i have all the time in the world to work on a particular project um, i won't be having any issues but uh, that doesn't work out well in real life and all of the project maintainers know it very well so make sure that uh, if you have any uh, other issues with your time like um, let's say you are uh, you will be still going to your college in summer uh, let's say you will be traveling somewhere let's say you are uh, 
moving out uh, to some other place within the timeline of your project let's say you are getting married within the timeline of your project make sure to maintain, uh, mention it in your proposal and take adequate days off for example i uh, just uh, in my proposals i always make sure to uh, mention all of my uh, like uh, iitm exam dates and i take a few days off before uh, all of my iitm exams uh, and i always have that mentioned right from the get go so that uh, i don't run into issues while working on the project so uh, and the last and final point which is the most important point i would say is that uh, make sure to discuss your proposal thoroughly with your mentor uh, so every project has a mentor if you start working on a particular project uh, there will be one particular guy that you will be uh, reaching out to for help so uh, once again while writing the proposal make sure to reach out to that guy again uh, and ask him Uh, how you, your proposal is going make sure to write a um, good draft of the proposal and discuss that draft with your mentor because at the end of the day it's your mentor who would be appro uh, approving your selection uh, so yeah, it definitely makes sense to discuss it all with your mentor don't skip that one uh, we have a general structure of a good proposal maybe uh, i think we might be running out of time over here Okay, we are running out of time. So, uh, take a screenshot of that. Uh, just a few extra tips. I know I'm going a little fast right here, but uh, yeah, build, uh, start building your proposal at least two, three weeks before the deadline. At least two, three weeks before the deadline, because uh, writing a proposal takes a lot of time and effort. Uh, if you have any extra ideas for the project, include them in your uh, proposals. Um, you have to think creatively on your own. Don't just um, Uh, you know, repeat the words of your mentors and all of that. You have to show that you can think, right? Um, then refer to other proposals that got selected in your desired organization. Like uh, in my particular case, I uh, referred to GSOC 2021 proposals that were listed on the Google Summer of Code website. Uh, I also asked a lot of folks uh, if they could share their proposal and all that. Uh, yeah, include diagrams, flowcharts, database tables, design mockups. Uh, to show that uh, you actually know a lot of uh, lot about your project and to also make it a, a little bit visually appeasing because no one reads all of that text diagrams make uh, points clear instantly uh, the proposal should also be comprehensible to someone who is unfamiliar with the project uh, let's say you have a friend of yours uh, who also works in your same tech stack but he doesn't know anything about Uh, your project so if you are writing a proposal make sure to make it easy to understand and make it uncomplicated so even that particular friend of yours could understand that um, project uh, yeah basically just make the proposal easy to understand uh, and like uh, of course get feedback on your proposal from your mentors as well as uh, previously selected uh, gsoc folks as well as some other uh, members of your particular community this step is crucial mm. and yeah i think you have discussed all these bonus tips within the uh, other tips as well yeah just uh, this one i would like to cover this is the best one um, this is the best bonus tip that i would, i could give to anyone right now like uh, just get rid of your imposter syndrome like imposter syndrome is like um, uh, it's when you feel like you are not enough trust me if you just work hard enough you are enough okay if you um, get early if you start working from november or let's say even january if you work continuously for 3 uh, months you will definitely get selected um, like gsoc is <laughs> i would say pretty over hyped in india like it's not that hard to get selected okay so definitely try your best and get rid of your imposter syndrome if you try hard enough you will definitely get selected uh and one more thing uh, like i always include this particular tip in all of my sessions uh, that is keep going you miss all the shots that you don't take um, you know what happened was um, while submitting my gsoc 2022 proposal uh, i was in a bus i was like uh, nauseating uh, it was the last day to submit the proposal i was discussing it with my mentor um, and i was about to give, uh, give up i thought like i wouldn't get selected anyway it's a big program Uh, why should i even submit the proposal and uh, my mentor just scolded me 
that um, you are going to fail anyway if you don't try so just take your damn time take 5 minutes extra maybe go vomit afterwards but uh, complete the proposal and submit it so yeah definitely go the extra step definitely submit your proposal definitely give it a shot and you might just get lucky uh, and yeah that was about it do we have any questions maybe thank you so much prathmesh it was a really you know uh, insightful session that we had uh, from you you gave us a lot of great points uh, it, i guess we uh, our viewers really got a understanding of how gsoc works how to go forward with choosing a proposal making a proposal choosing a project and finding something that you really like and uh, you know throughout this entire uh, you know understanding of uh, gsoc it might look daunting at first but once you break it down into all of these tiny steps it becomes really easy to digest and the pay is definitely worth the hard work that you put in right so um uh, so i would like to open the floor for questions now i believe we do have a couple of questions in the chat uh so uh let's start with <laughs> Uh, Mr. Sachin, actually, you are not uh, audible. Can you please repeat your question? A little louder, maybe. Sachin, uh, we can't hear you. Uh, could you repeat that for us, please? Or uh, if your if your mic is having an issue, then you can always drop it in the chat. Yes, Tanmay, please go ahead. Yeah. So. about the project selection my first question is my project uh, what i am working on the company selection should be based on the tech stack or the my project that is like uh, which sector it belongs to um like i would say definitely has to be a combination of um, all the factors that matter to you like uh, for me personally i first take uh, if my tech stack for the project matches like uh, obviously i can't just go and work on a react project because i want to be a data scientist um, so yeah definitely see if uh, what the pre- project takes is uh, what you have and um, then after that maybe you can also see like uh, if you like the particular project if you like the problem statement if you uh, like the impact that the particular project brings so yeah that's it so uh, uh, can i follow up on that question Sure. Yeah. So, like as you discussed for the meta planes, where right, there was a list of projects that you from which you saw and selected your own project. So, like mm-hmm. there's a project that I have been working on. So, my proposal couldn't be like the project that I have been working on. It should be like the list of projects that they have given from, right? Ah, uh, yes, definitely. Like, ah, uh, uh, you can go both ways in this one actually. you can either uh, select a project that the organization has listed or you can propose your own new project but i would strongly recommend uh, i would strongly advise against uh, the second uh, option like don't just um, go into or a new organization and just drop in your new idea and expect them to select that idea because they already have uh, a lot of their issues open uh, they already have a lot of projects listed because uh, they are in need of someone to come and solve those Uh, projects right so don't just uh, uh, go propose your own new project uh, if you if you are, if you have to propose a new project maybe it's not a good idea because uh, if it were a good idea they might have uh, like listed it already does that answer your question for me yeah thank you sure so divyanshu you can go ahead Okay um first of all yes oh yeah yeah please go ahead yes answer, first yeah. of all thank you for this amazing session right uh, so my question is how to select the right organization sir so, um, so okay selecting the right organization maybe uh, is my screen visible no no okay yes please sir Okay, so for finding the right organization, 
like as we discussed previously in the session, I don't know if my screen was sharing um, that particular point of time in the discussion. Uh, for the logis for that, um, but yeah, you can just go to this website, summerofcode.google.google.com, uh, uh, and on this part, uh, you can just search for these of organizations, and you will get a list of all the organizations that are uh, working with these of. Okay, and uh, there is a thing that uh, not all of these organizations appear every year, so there is a chance like. Uh, uh, if you select an organization before it gets uh, before it gets listed on the GSOC website, uh, there's a slight chance that it might uh, not appear for GSOC that particular year. So yeah, make sure to uh, see if your com uh, community has been uh, coming for GSOC every year or not. Like PostgreSQL, uh, this is a pretty huge community. It um, joins GSOC every year. So like you can bet if GSOC happens next year, even PostgreSQL will be a part of it. Even like Chromium, that's a Google project. Obviously, it will be in GSOC. Um, the KDE community, that's a pretty huge community. Uh, and yes, for finding your community, you have to find something that you uh, like relate with. Okay. So maybe let's say you are a Linux enthusiast. You like to uh, work with Linux related stuff. Maybe KDE is the right community for you. Um, or let's say uh, you like working with um, Android, you can maybe work with the Kotlin Foundation. If you like building compilers, you can go work with LLVM. Um, or let's say you, if you like working with, uh, if you just want to work with some data related companies, uh, you, you can select uh, quite a few of them like uh, OSPO right here, Red Hand Lab, then uh, even R is great. Okay, and the analysis. Okay, so all of these, um, let's say I thought you said three different organizations. Now, what I will do is that uh, I just go explore. Okay, you have to just go find out about those organizations. You have to uh, take interest. Uh, you have to see what those organizations are all about. You can reach out to folks uh, from that organization on LinkedIn or on uh, their chat channels. Okay, these, uh, this particular organization works on Slack. So you can directly join their Slack channel and ask some questions over there. So it's all about you. You just have to uh, explore organizations. For me particularly, I just like working with music. I like working with data. Uh, so MetaBrains was the best choice for me. And that's why I chose MetaBrains. So yeah, it varies from person to person. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yes, Aryan, you can go ahead, please. So, as uh, someone that you, uh, someone who's participated in the GSOC in previous uh, previous years as well, I'm very okay. curious as to what are the shifts in technology you're observing right now. What are the things coming in? What are the things going out? Okay, that's an interesting question. Like, uh, uh, I first of all say like um, I've, I haven't been into GSOC for that long. I joined in 2022, and now it's like 2023. So. Uh, in one year, like uh, at least in my particular organization, um, I have seen like a lot of shift towards uh, AI. Like uh, obviously they are not shifting completely towards AI, but as a data-oriented company, they are trying to implement measures uh, for or against like um, AI. Like for example, we have a product called uh, Book Drains, where you can just leave your uh, book reviews. Okay, so what people are doing nowadays that they are just generating a response with chat GPT and posting it on uh, book brains for like internet points or something. So uh, we are coming with some um, policies against um, the use of uh, large language models or LLMs like chat GPT and Google Bard, etc. So yeah, the um, open source is no stranger to uh, all of that. And yeah, I have also been seeing a lot of folks using chat GPT to come up with uh, like uh, even their project proposals, so don't do that. Uh, ChatGPT has a sort of accent that anyone who has used it uh, can identify. So if you write your proposal with uh, ChatGPT, that will leave a bad impression. So don't do that, please. You can use ChatGPT to like uh, get help with your proposal, but don't make it write your whole proposal because it will generate bad proposals. Anyway. Yeah, I entirely yeah. agree with the accent part. Uh, in addition to that, I'm curious as to are there any uh, personalities online 
that have in your mind done the whole learning in public thing well such that newcomers can shadow them to uh, make their own profiles good yeah definitely uh, there is this guy called kunal gupta i am uh, actually two guys one is kunal gupta and i'm just writing his name in the chat and other one is harkirat singh like uh, both of them have their uh, own youtube channels both of them are pretty active on uh, linkedin and twitter and all of that so definitely go follow them um, in fact these guys were my own um, you know inspirations for getting into this of in the first place uh, so definitely i recommend following these guys even i post about open source in our channel so if you want you can follow me too does that answer your question just the final follow up is how much uh, time and attention should aspirants uh, put on this avenue so what should be the frequency and uh, yeah basically like that what should be the frequency of the post we make um, okay so for me i personally uh, back in november 2021 i start preparing for gsoc 2022 so you can start a little later if you are like more proficient in any particular technology and all of that but i was pretty um, new back then i was like in second year i didn't know anything uh, other than python i was picking up some other technology and all of that uh, so yeah i started back in november and kept going until like uh, uh, march when the application is actually closed you don't have to uh, both head for all the time but like if you are just starting out i recommend starting out from november because uh, it's not just that you are preparing just for this you are like building your whole portfolio and uh, you are doing the basic steps that, that are like a baseline for every other opportunity out there so um, like if i were to say specifically for gsoc i would say like one or two months and you have to give a lot uh, give it a lot of attention and once you get like experience like uh, in gsoc 2023 i basically wrote a proposal in like 30 days or something so i don't recommend it for new comers Yeah, at least two or three months for dedicated efforts. Okay, uh, Saksham, you can go ahead with your Hello. doubt. Hello, am I audible? Sir. Yes, you are audible. Please go ahead. My question is a little bit awkward. Uh, I want to ask, uh, like, can a student just follow GSOC, uh, like web development side and DSC side together? Like from a uh, job perspective, uh, if a recruiter is reading my resume, uh, mm. if he gets that that a uh, student has done a GSOC, uh, he has gone in a web development side as well as in a DSC side, does that leave uh, a good impression? Okay, uh, what is exactly DSC? Can you explain? Uh, data structures algorithms. Okay, okay, DSC. Okay, right. Um, yeah, definitely. Like uh, most people do the same. Like uh, they also do development and they also do DSC. For uh, me, for uh, personally, it's um, all about data science, so I don't do DSA a lot. Uh, but if I were, let's say, a web developer who wants to get into DSA, um, I would continue my DSA journey alongside because DSA is definitely important. Uh, at the end of the day, you will get um, into DSA without any DSA at all. So DSA is not required for DSA, but uh, eventually you will have to get a job, and for that job, um, a lot of the companies do ask DSA. So yeah, maintain both at the same time. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. You're welcome. All right. So, does anyone else have any questions? It it's an open floor, guys. You guys can go ahead, raise your hands, and we'll be ask uh, answering the questions. Uh, yes, Harsh. So we will be sharing the resources to you via email. All registered candidates will be getting their uh, resources. Uh, we'll share a uh, we'll share a link to you guys after the session is over. Uh, any other questions, guys? Uh, maybe you can also pin all the resources in the YouTube comment section. Uh, yes, yes, definitely, yeah. definitely. Um, mm -hmm. So Aryan asks, would you be interested in sharing your own timeline and acquiring skills? The skills you uh, possess presently, skills you are preparing, skills you see becoming redundant. So pretty much, uh, how did you, uh, you know, go about learning the skills necessary for GSOC? And uh, was there anything that you learned that you feel isn't really all that useful right now? Okay, quite an interesting question, I would say. 
like um, I would go according to timeline of my offline college. Like I am doing BTEC as well as uh, this BS and uh, this BS in the data science and applications. Uh, so yeah, in the um, so I am from the 2020 to 2024 batch. I'll be graduating next year, and my college started back in uh, like um, uh, lockdown. So the first year just flew by. I did nothing at all, um, except for maybe exploring a few things. Like my first year was finished in six months, um, so yeah, you get the idea. Then in second year, like um, I was like quite depressed because I had I hadn't done anything in first year. Like I just uh, watched anime and all that. So <laughs> what I did, I decided that uh, I'd be doing something like uh, let's say data science. Data science was uh, all the hype back then. I had uh, also recently got the IITM online degree program. Um, I think 2021. So what I did. Uh, I just, uh, first of all, I picked up a course on Coursera that was for Applied Data Science in Python. Uh, great course, highly recommend it. Um, then, when I started doing that particular course, uh, I did it very seriously. I took notes, um, I learned Python, I gathered some basic skills for like pandas and all of that. Uh, I did some basic data cleaning. I did the, uh, did the weekly projects that uh, the guys had recommended. Then uh, after that, I did a few more courses. Like um, in the first, uh, in those six or eight months, like I was so dedicated, I completed like uh, 14 or 15 different courses, I think, on Coursera. Um, so yeah, you can just go on my LinkedIn profile and look at the uh, courses that I had completed, maybe if you want to follow the same path. Um, but yeah, one warning. I started out with data science and then I slowly shifted towards data engineering, MLOps, um, and like data analytics because I don't think maths is my cup of tea. Um, so, yeah, feel free to like update your choices um, later down the, uh, down the line. But yeah, I just started out with uh, some basic data science courses. I learned Python, I learned Python very well. I worked on some projects. Then I hosted those projects on GitHub. Then I started applying for opportunities. Uh, then at the start of my third year, I got into GSOC. And ever since then, I have been just finding projects because uh, projects are hands on the best way to learn um, anything new. So yeah, that was most it. Um, and yeah, mo um, yeah, I would also say that uh, some things that are getting redundant. Mm. Not much, I would say, but if I had to say one thing, it's like BSA is uh, uh, going down in popularity nowadays, especially if you are in open roles, you can get by without BSA, but I would definitely not recommend not doing the, any BSA at all, because uh, I myself am suffering because I haven't done any BSA in the past two years. Uh, so I yeah, don't skip it, but it's like a downwards thing. Okay, so uh, Tivyanshu? Sure. Uh, this will be the last question for today. Yes, Divyanshu, you can go ahead, please. Yes, my, my question is uh, how IT Madras helped you get into GSOC? Okay, so um, like back when I first applied for GSOC, I was uh, pretty new to the program. I didn't have a lot of friends in here and all of that. But um, um, yeah, this program like, uh, yes, it gave, uh, gave me some basic skills in like Python and all of that. Like uh, foundational Python was helpful because my projects were in Python. Uh, then like, um, I would say the most helpful thing that IITM has done for me with, within this program is like um, providing me with a great peer group. Like uh, when you see uh, all the folks around you that are like, um, uh, you know, pretty dedicated towards their cause, uh, dedicated towards learning and all that, it forces you to push yourself forward. And um, yeah, like in my four years of college, I would say the one thing that has been the biggest deciding factor of my all of my success is I would say a good peer group. If I, um, let's say I had a bad peer group um, in, in my offline college as well as um, at IITM in the online degree program, uh, I don't think I would have done anything. I would have just engaged around, watched anime and all of that. So yes, definitely get a good peer group. That helps a lot. Thank you. Yeah, so 
Thank you so much, Prasmish, for joining us today. It was a really insightful session. I'm quite sure all of our viewers have taken something uh, to learn from this session. So thank you so much for breaking down GSOC in such a wonderful manner. Uh, I'm quite sure a lot of students will, you know, pick up uh, the skills that they have learned today to move forward on the OSS journey as well. Uh, if mm -hmm. the students have any other questions, then they can reach out to Prathamesh. I'm quite sure that he has given his, uh, you know, blog as well. So um, you can also reach out to the SPC and the IIC in case you have any other questions related to open source contributions, or if you just need any guidance uh, regarding your placement journey as well. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining. I hope you all have a great rest of the week. And, you know, have a good one. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Prathamesh, for joining us once again. Yeah, thanks for having me. And thanks for all the wonderful questions and thanks for listening till the end. Thank you so much, everyone. We'll be closing the session now. I hope you have a great rest of the week. Yeah. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye, Prathamesh. Bye, Bye, everyone.